Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. So a little while ago, uh, just under a year ago, I made a video about dirty electricity. You can watch that up here. It explains what dirty electricity is and how to get rid of it. Uh, for those of you not watching this on YouTube, I'll put all the links down in the description. Uh, I made another video about uh, instead of purchasing, say, like these Green Wave dirty electricity filters, you can actually make your own. So if you want, you can uh, watch that video, build your own filters, and save a whole ton of money. Now, I've been using uh, both of these filters, types of filters, for uh, I think it's been about mm, 10 months or so. And I have to say that, yes, dirty electricity filters actually do work. They do release the electrical noise. Normally you have an AC sine wave clean power, looks like this. And with dirty electricity, there's noise on it. These filters, they get rid of the noise. Now, um, there's one little problem with them that you probably are unaware of. And that is that you should not use dirty electricity filters if you have a backup generator. When you are running on generator power, you need to unplug them. So why is that? Now, these dirty electricity filters are a capacitive load. So they look a little something like this. Uh, they're basically just capacitors across, you know, from, from live and neutral to ground. Those are kind of unnecessary. Those are for a different type of noise filtering. But primarily you just have some capacitors, one or more, uh, between neutral and the phase or live pin. Um, there's also some resistors to discharge those capacitors if you unplug the filter, but basically you're talking about a large capacitor, a capacitance across live and neutral, right? Now, AC loads, of course, alternating current, you know, if you have a battery, it's, it's direct current. It's just, you know, positive and negative terminal, current flows in one direction all the time, you're done. With AC, it's alternating current. You can represent it as a sine wave. The electrons flow this way, then they flow that way, then they flow this way, and so on and so forth. Okay, so when we have AC power, we have three general types of loads that that, that power outlet or that generator is going to be powering. They are resistive, inductive, and capacitive. Now, a resistive load is purely like a resistance. Uh, every, every conductor resists the flow of electricity. This generates heat. So, for example, um, the, the most obvious example of a purely resistive load would be, say, an electric heater. All it is is a wire, current flows through it, AC or DC, doesn't matter, generates heat, boom, it's a purely resistive load. Now, no load is technically purely resistive or purely inductive, but for the sake of our example, let's just say, okay, that's a resistive load. You also have capacitive and inductive loads. Now, a capacitive load is one that has lots of capacitance, i.e., parallel plates, it holds a charge, capacitors act, they're, they're a fundamental electronic component, and uh, that has a certain effect on alternating current, as we'll see in a minute. And of course we have inductive loads, which is an inductor, i.e. a coil of wire. And of course we know that, say, motors have coils of wire in them, and generators have coils of wire, so they are primarily inductive loads, we call them. Now why does this matter? Okay, so Right, so when we have uh, alternating current and you have a purely resistive load, you get something like this. You have this lovely little chart and the blue waveform, it's the sine wave of the alternating current, and uh, the blue sine wave is the voltage and the red sine wave is the current. Now in a purely resistive load, as the voltage goes up, the current is going to go up and they're going to be nicely in sync. So okay, there you go, we say power factor equals one. Uh, when we have an inductive load, uh, then you'll notice that something happens here. You get a phase shift. The current waveform actually lags behind the voltage waveform. So first the voltage has to go up, and then after, just slightly after it goes up, the current sine wave, the current wave starts to go up. Okay, so that's an inductive load. Then for a capacitive load, uh, again, we have something slightly different. Uh, what happens is the current actually leads the voltage. So you can see that the current waveform there is actually going up slightly before the voltage starts going up. Now, as I said, dirty electricity filters are capacitive loads, and herein lies the problem when you're using DE filters on generator power. Now, generators are generally designed to have a power factor of about 0.8, and what that means is that they have a lagging power factor. Since they're primarily in, uh, in inductors, um, the, the voltage leads the current, right? That's kind of how they're designed 
to run, and that's when they're the most stable. But when you add capacitors to the circuit, you're adding a capacitive load, which means you end up with a leading power factor, i.e. this graph where the current waveform is happening, it's peaking before the voltage waveform. And this has three primary effects. First of all, the voltage output from the generator actually increases. And so instead of, say, 120 or 230 volts, you might get 130, 140. Instead of 230 volts, you might see 240, 254 volts. That's what I was seeing on my generator. I'm going, hmm, why is this happening? Uh, the stability of the generator goes down, and the maximum possible power output of the generator also drops when you have too many capacitive loads. Now, of course, the question is, why is this so? And the answer involves some crazy math that uh, uh, some of it looks like this. We won't go into that because <laughs> there's a there's a much simpler analogy that we can use to explain why this is so. A generator is like the alternator in a car. Uh, the generators, typically, if it's an AC generator, they don't have permanent magnets that move and the magnetic field lines cut through the wires and that induces a current, generates electricity, right? Uh, generators are basically, they're, they're alternators. So uh, you have to actually apply a little bit of electricity in one winding. You have a generator, you have a static winding and a a stator and a rotor, static windings and rotating windings. And in one set of windings, you're going to actually apply some electricity, and that's going to create an electromagnetic field. Then when you start to rotate it, uh, that mo moving electromagnetic field, it's kind of like if, if you had permanent magnets instead, it starts generating electricity. It takes some of that electricity and feeds it back into the, the winding to keep, it's kind of self-sustaining, but it's generating power. Now, what actually happens is when you have uh, too much of a capacitive load, i.e. too many DE filters, that tends to destabilize the whole thing. Now, um, to put it more simply, you can think of it like uh, putting these DE filters, plugging them into your house when you're running on generator power. Let's say that these DE filters, these capacitive loads, are like, um, like a little bottle of blue dye, right? And your generator is a glass of water. So your glass of water, it, it's a finite amount of water. And so you, you plug these DE filters in, and that's putting like a couple drops of blue dye into your glass of water. Well, what's going to happen? Well, the water is going to turn blue in the glass, right? You're going to have blue, a blue glass of blue water. Right, that's because a generator has a very low capacity as compared to the electric grid. Now, when you're talking about the power grid, you plug in like 10 or 20 of these filters and you don't really have any problems. And the reason for that is because the power grid is basically like an ocean. If you put several drops of blue dye in an ocean, it ain't going to turn blue. So the power grid, it, you know, you've got your power company and they're feeding, uh, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of different homes. It's a huge, massive reservoir of electrical capacity. And not only that, but you have all these different houses and businesses and companies and people and they've all got all their gizmos connected to that same grid. So if you add some more capacitance to that whole giant massive grid, that whole ocean, um, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. Uh, and of course, it won't make a difference to your electric bill either, because even though it's skewing power factor, uh, you are not actually billed for um, KVA, you are billed for kilowatts. You're billed for real power that you are actually consuming. So, right. Um, the deal is that uh, these dirty electricity filters are pretty awesome. They work. Um, I have to say I have not noticed any particular health benefits from using them. Uh, recently, uh, I was actually, you know, had a power outage, was running on generator power, and uh, it, yeah, the generator went a little bit crazy, and I finally was able to determine that it was these guys causing the problem. So. You don't have to ditch your dirty electricity filters. You can use them, but just be advised that if you have uh, any kind of backup generator and the power goes out, you will want to unplug all your DE filters while you are on generator power. And when the grid comes back up, then you can plug them back in again and do your filtering. And that is why, because sticking that much capacitance in there, uh, that generator is too small. It's, it's, uh, it's a glass of water, not an ocean of electrical energy generation. So, um, yeah, that's the deal. Oops. For more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.